Well, guys, you may have been wondering what I was going to do with that uh, AMD board that had bad SATA on it uh, from the uh, that computer build video recently. Well, the uh, well, I, f I found out more has gone wrong with it. The, uh, the front USB headers are also bad, both of them. So it seems that that part of the board is just having trouble. But as you can see, I got it to run. I got Windows 7 installed on here. Uh, with a gig of RAM, it needs more than that. I have Windows. I'm running 764-bit on a gig of RAM. It's it. it when I open a web browser, it's just going to start mashing the uh, the page file like crazy. Well, let me show you the inside of this thing. Okay, so I put my own heatsink on it. This is actually a 939 heatsink that I got like six years ago with uh, an Athlon X2. Uh, so I put it in the case that's for my workshop computer. This is what it's going to be, by the way. It's going to be my workshop computer. Uh, the cables are a bit of a mess. I stuck a 160-gigabyte Seagate drive in there, the one that I took out of the eMac. Luckily, this drive is old, so it's actually a good Seagate drive back when they made things that were decent. Um, and you can see the board has that... Uh, weird slot at the bottom. It's got a PCI X1 slot, a couple of PCI slots, and a PCI EX16 slot. It's that same board from before. But I am using an IDE hard drive and an IDE DVD drive on the same channel because that's on the same cable because that's all I can do right now. And it's rebooting there. As you can see, I have the, I still left the Athlon 3200 Plus in there because I did some research on that, and apparently an, a single-core Athlon 3200 Plus does better than a Pentium 4 3.06 gigahertz. So the Pentium 4 really was a garbage architecture. Uh, I know AMD was on top back in these days. That's why I, that's why I started with AMD was because back in these days, 2005, 2006, AMD was on top because the Pentium 4 was so crap. Uh, the Pentium M and the Pe and the Core s series have been really good though. Um, but for a single core, this thing is pretty is pretty good. You hear that hard drive clicking away? That's a seventy seventy two hundred dot seven. That's in there. I don't have any graphics installed. I'm using all on board. This is an Enforce four hundred five uh, chipset, I think. I might be wrong on that actually. It has, yeah, it's a yeah, it's an Enforce four hundred five chipset uh, with NVIDIA sixty one hundred graphics on board. So those were detected by Windows seven. The only thing I had to do was uh, use the Windows Vista sixty four bit sound driver to get uh, sound work, the onboard sound working, and the the onboard sound is good. It's real tech. It's not via or anything disgusting. It's real tech. So. This board actually has decent hardware on it. It was just built rather poorly, uh, considering that uh, USB headers don't work and uh, SATA doesn't work. So I'm guessing there's a problem somewhere, either with the board itself or the chipset. Uh, what didn't the reason I changed that heatsink out was because the heatsink itself was actually warping the board. Uh, it was pushing down on where the processor was, and there was no metal metal plate to, on the back to stabilize it so it was actually like creating a dip in the board right where the processor was so that heat sink was just re had ridiculous tension on it this one doesn't so that this shouldn't warp the board and I'm wondering if that that warping of the board didn't actually cause some of these issues with SATA and USB and that would be food for thought uh, yeah so it's running Windows 7 it's, uh, There we go. Uh, it's a 2 gigahertz processor with 1 gig of RAM. I, it probably needs more RAM than this because it's running a 64-bit operating system, for God's sake. Uh, but <clears throat> if 1 gig of RAM will will do for YouTube, Skype, and TeamSpeak, and I am in clients, then I'll leave the gig in here. But if not, this board can take, I think, up to 8 gigs. Either four or eight gigs. I'm pretty sure it's eight gigs, though. But I wouldn't put more than four in this thing. It's not worth it on a board like this. Um, 
I'd probably put two in there and leave it at that. But there you go. That's what I've done with this machine. I'm gonna put the. Uh, I'm probably. I'm gonna put the serial header back in, so I can have a serial port in case I ever need one. And I'm also gonna put this via SATA controller card in there. The, the via chip is. A VT6421A, and it's quite a reliable controller. Uh, Linux doesn't like it though. I I used to use it in my file server, and Linux would complain about this thing. Um, since SATA doesn't work in here, I'm going to put this in here so I can use this computer to wipe hard drives and do diagnostics and things like that. So this card's not bootable, so it it's merely in here for when I boot up, let's say, a Linux disk or something, and uh, check a hard drive out. I'm going to need that fairly soon actually because I need to check the hard drive that was originally with this board and get the data off of it as well. So that's what I've done with uh, this board. It's see, I like to salvage a board if it's usable and this is definitely usable. Um, I was talking with UXW Bill during his uh, show the other uh, last night actually and he was he is telling me that he I think he has a similar uh Nvidia 6100 based Dell machine. If I'm not mistaken it's a Dimension 5100. Uh correct me if I'm wrong, Bill. Uh and he says that'll run YouTube absolutely fine. So especially with the processor I have, so we'll find out. I'll sh I'll show you in the video once I get everything all up to date and get software installed and whatnot. So woohoo. Okay, I've done a few things to this machine. I have stuck another gig of RAM in here, so it has two gigs of RAM with Windows 7. Uh, I actually checked a few hard drives with it because I needed to do that before I brought it down to the workshop. And uh, it turns out the onboard SATA actually does work. Uh, it wasn't before, and this cable's to blame. Uh, th this cable's bad because I plugged this cable into the SATA controller card I had in here and it didn't work. But that other hard drive that came with the other machine that I checked, it it was bad. The cable and the hard drive were bad. So there you have it. SATA uh does seem to work on this board. However, I'm not going to use it for the the primary hard drive. The one thing that doesn't work on this board is uh uh the USB headers. They're they're just dead to the world. So something must have shorted them out. So that's a bonus, actually, that this thing works. Um, I was pretty sure it was the board, but the board apparently does have some problems because of the, because of the USB header's not working. So there you have it, this cheap cable. Uh, apparently they got it from satacables.com. Yeah, satacables.com apparently is where they got it, so... Surprise, surprise, it failed. But the drive, the hard drive itself was bad. It was getting reading errors. The cable is, was bad uh, because it w just wouldn't detect anything half the time. So, there you have it. Uh, I've also installed a bunch of software on this machine. And I'd also like to see how YouTube performance is. So, I say we open up Firefox for the first time. And go to YouTube. Gone to youtube.com slash lmall3. I guess a video about the red Prius will have to do. Let's see if, how well it plays. Is it choppy? It's not. It plays absolutely fine. This is in 480p. What, or what about 480p? Let's try that. It's in 480p. Let's try 720p. Even 720p plays perfectly, and this is all in a single core processor. Just remember that. These Athlon 64s were king back in the day, and this is why. They can handle quite, a, you can handle, they can handle quite a bit when you, when you throw things at them. So that's good to see. So I don't need to add a video card to this machine to get it so I can, you know, watch YouTube videos. I added a little bit of RAM because I'm going to have several programs open at once. Um, and, you know that all that fun stuff so that's what I've done to this machine that's another thing I've discovered about this board and it just shows uh, how much I really need to work on my troubleshooting I should check everything uh, 
I should check the frickin' cable. That's what I should do. I didn't even think of the cable because the cable looked absolutely fine. It 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 was the cable uh, before I unraveled it was zip tied together and just looked great and organized. So I never even suspected the cable. So it, yeah, the cable was a problem too. Uh, well, there you have it. This will be a great workshop computer. Uh, now that I know that SATA actually does work, and it was just the cable. So there you go. And the hard drive itself was bad. Just wow. <laughs> I, I, just, I embarrassed myself big time. Just saying, oh no, it's the board. Oh no, it's the hard drive. Oh no, it's the cable. Oh no, it's this. You know, whatever. You live and learn. And I made dumb, I made assumptions and, you know, assumptions make an ass out of you. So that's what happens. Anyhow, I'm rambling. I will stop. This is my new workshop computer and what I did with that other AMD board. So, hope you enjoyed it and have a good one, everybody. Ciao.